peace peace to everybody that's that's just uh tuning in live or that's watching on youtube or later on twitch and we getting into into this lesson called god returns when israel awakens because we're gonna see that as we read along in this lesson that that the return of the lord is predicated on israel like this whole this whole bible honestly is predicated on israel like i know we got we got you know jesus came in and opened up the gospel of the world to you know the gospel to go out to the nations of the world but that still doesn't diminish israel's position in all of this right because exodus 19 it'll tell you that um you know god chose israel to be a nation of kings and priests a holy nation you know and that that job that the lord gave them it hasn't changed even though even though yes christ did die and and the gospel's been been able to open up to the world but the condition of israel is still is still very relevant to the lord's salvation plan right so we're gonna open this up at deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15 because this is a this is a list of curses that was going to happen to the israelites if they didn't obey the lord's commandments right so we're going to start off at verse 15 it said in deuteronomy 28 it says although i can read it right here but i just want to get in my book but verse 15 actually we're going to start at verse one real quick just to see how, just to see the contrast, right? So it says for, in verse one, and it shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, right? And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, right? So it's still the Lord talking to the children of Israel through the mouth of Moses. But skip down to verse 15, because um, at first we see that, okay, if we keep the, the law, statutes, and commandments that of the Lord, that he was gonna he was gonna bless the children of Israel and make them the pretty much the best nation on earth, right? So now, verse 15 it says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Right now, skipping down to verse 46, and we're gonna see something about these curses. Right, verse 46, and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon all thy seed forever. But let's let's start off with verse 45, just to read into it. It says, moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee. So it's still talking about these curses, right? These curses are going to come upon the children of Israel and pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And still talking about these curses. And they shall be a sign upon thee and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Right? So... Let's look up what a sign is, right? Let's see, an object, quality, or event whose presence or occurrence indicates the probable presence or occurrence of something else. A notice that is publicly displayed, giving information or instructions in a written or symbolic form. Okay, so that that can that can be a, a better definition for a sign in this case. A notice that is publicly displayed, giving information or instructions in a written or symbolic form, or a sign, a mark, a token, right?
but like if we want to break it down into its plainest terms right you know let's say let's say you're hungry you know and you're hungry and you want to find a place to eat you go out you see a sign that says mcdonald's this sign is identifying something right this uh, this is this is showing you that hey this is a mcdonald's right here and this is where you can get food get burgers stuff like that right so these curses are going to be a sign upon this people they're going to identify this people and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever now verse 64 one of these curses it says and the lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even into the other so one of these curses is that these israelites are going to be scattered among all people excuse me and it says and there thou shalt serve other gods so wherever we get scattered to we're gonna start serving other gods right which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone and among these nations shalt thou find no ease neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest but the lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind so you're going to be taken into nations that you haven't known taken into captivity into these other nations and wherever you get taken at wherever you touch down among these nations you will not find any ease neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest right you're going to be going through a con continual cycle of of being downtrodden right it says but the lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee and thou shalt fear day and night and shall have none assurance of thy life in the morning thou, sh thou shalt say with god it were even and at even thou shalt say with god it were morning for the fear of for the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see and the lord shall bring me into egypt again with ships by the way whereof i spake unto thee thou shalt see it no more again and there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women and no man shall buy you so one of these major curses is being scattered into captivity like when you see down here it says and the lord shall bring me into egypt again now if you go to exodus chapter 20 it says and god spake all these words saying I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So, in Exodus 20, Egypt is synonymous with the house of bondage, and we'll see that other places in the Bible as well. So, the Lord in uh, Deuteronomy 28:68 it says, "And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again for bondage, because that's the first captivity that the uh, that the Israel Israelites were in under the Egyptians, right?" So he said, I'm, I'm pretty much going to bring you back into that, into that same condition, into that captivity again, right? But it's not just Egypt again, because in verse 64, he said, he's, we're going to be scattered among all people, right? So that's not limited to Egypt at all. If we go to Isaiah, I think chapter 11. Yeah, and uh, in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt. Okay, so we see Egypt here, right? But it's not just limited to Egypt. It's Assyria too, and Pathros, and from Cush. So you got, you got uh, Semitic countries, and you got Hamite countries, which is, which is like in Africa and stuff like that and from Elam and from Shinar oh so that's where Babylon is and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea so we see that the children of Israel got scattered to a lot of places not just not just limited to Egypt so when we look at this Deuteronomy 28 and 68 again like it's not just talking about Egypt specifically but it's talking about that condition that the Israelites were in Egypt in that uh in in slavery and captivity right 
So it says, and the Lord shall bring me into Egypt again with ships. But mind you, again, this is a worldwide captivity. And we won't see our homeland again. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there, wherever we touch down, wherever these ships touch, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. Right? Now let's go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, and, and let's let's get into, into the signs of, of the end of the world, the signs of or like I just said, the end. Because Jesus is gonna is gonna run it down. So Matthew 24, we're gonna start at verse 3. It says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So the disciples are asking Jesus a three-part question. When should these things be? Talking about the temple. The temple, uh, the Lord's temple being broken down. Because previously, Jesus had said, like, there's not going to be one stone upon another of this temple. That's not going to be thrown down. So now his disciples are asking, okay, so when is this going to be? That and what should be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Three-part question, right? Verse 4, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. So don't let anybody trick you on this. Verse 14, it says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. But in Deuteronomy 28, right? Didn't we see that, that the Lord's nation of pre actually hold on i'm gonna i'm gonna get that real quick okay so exodus 19 and verse 5 actually no i'm gonna start at verse 3 it says and moses went up to god and the Lord called him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say unto the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. So this is God talking to Moses, and he's like, Okay, Moses, tell Israel, tell these children of Israel, You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then shall ye be, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. Now he wasn't just talking to Levi right here. He was talking to the house of Jacob, all twelve tribes of Israel, that now ye sh and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Again, not talking to just Levi. He's talking to all of Israel. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So if if the children of Israel were, to be God, were supposed to be God's nation of priests, right? What's going to happen to these nation of priests? When they're cursed, these, this nation of priests is going to be scattered. They still got that job of being priests, though. But he said that they were going to be scattered, right? Uh, let me check on the stream real quick. But yeah, he said that this nation of priests is going to be scattered as... A punishment for not not keeping God's laws right so back in Matthew 24 we see that in this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come so the end isn't going to come until this gospel is preached unto all nations right so now let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 30 Deuteronomy chapter 30 because First, we see that his that the Lord's nation of priests are going to be scattered into all the world, and then Jesus says that this gospel is going to be preached unto all the king, all nations, for a witness, you know, and then the end will come. So now let's go to Deuteronomy 30, verses 1 through 3, and we're going to see how that's going to take place, how this how the gospel is going to reach all the world. 
because his priests are going to be scattered all over the world. But Deuteronomy 30 and verse 1, it says, And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse. The blessing being when the Lord said he was going to make Israel the, the pretty much the top nation. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28 just to read it verbatim. He said, and if thou shalt, and it shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So that's the blessing, right? But the curse being Israel being sent off into captivity, scattered off into slavery. So it says, and, and when and it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse. The blessing, destination, the curse, captivity, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee. So we're going to call to mind these blessings and these curses after we get scattered, right? Still, talking about the Lord's nation of priests being scattered, but wherever they get scattered to, they're going to remember the blessing and the curse. Oh, we used to, we used to have something. This wasn't our land you know it says and, when, and it shall come to pass when all these things will come upon thee the blessing and the curse which i have set before thee and thou shalt call them the mind among all the nations you, you going you, they're going to remember the blessing and they're going to remember the curses right for the lord thy god has driven thee verse 2 and shall return unto the lord thy god and shall obey his voice according to all that i command thee this day that and thy children with all thy heart and with all thy soul that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity oh so once we start remembering that we that we used to be a blessed nation and now that we're cursed we're going to start remembering what the Lord commanded us wherever we get driven at right and then it says that the, then the Lord thy God is going to turn our captivity right and have compassion upon you and will return. That's the key thing right there. And will return. He said, after, pretty much after they've, the nation of Israel has been scattered, we're going to go back to obeying God. And then the Lord will return and gather Israel, gather thee from all the nations where the Lord thy God has scattered thee, right? But that's, that's low key how, how this gospel is going to reach all the nations. Because once we get scattered off, we got to remember the laws of God among the nations that we got scattered to, right? And then we're going to start teaching them to our children, keeping it with all our heart and with all our soul, right? But now let's continue on to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. This is Paul talking to the Romans because honestly at, at this point the Romans they were getting a little a little puffed up that oh now we got the word of God because you know God was merciful enough to allow the word of God to be to be preached to everyone at this point but you got a lot of Gentiles getting puffed up because now they got the word too so Paul's kind of got to reiterate to them because there's still an order to this right because the nation of Israel are still God's nation of priests, right? They, they still pretty much have a right to all this. So you got Paul talking and he's like, I say that have God cast away his people? God forbid, because a lot of people think that, that the Lord just cast away Israel and, and now, now the Lord isn't working through Israel and now he's just working through the Christian or something like that or working through everybody, but not. Nah, God still has an order to things. He still has a nation set up that's supposed to bring the other nations to the Lord because it's a nation of priests, right? So if this is a nation of priests, 
who are the priests supposed to preach to? Are we supposed to preach to each other? Or are they supposed to preach to someone who doesn't, you know, who doesn't know it or who wants to learn about it, right? So this nation of priests is supposed to bring the world to the Lord. Like that's the order God has it in. Like not to not to say anyone can't teach about the Lord, but he got one specific nation to do this job though. And that's the nation of Israel. And that still hasn't changed. That's why Paul has to reiterate it to the Romans right here. He says, I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. So he, he even knew what tribe he was from. You know, he, he knew his whole pedigree. Verse 2, it says, God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. So God didn't cast away the Israelites, even though he did send them off into captivity. He didn't cast them away, though. What, what ye not what the scripture saith of, of Elias? So do you not know what the scripture said of Elijah? How he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? So what what did what did God say to Elijah though? He said, He said, I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. And this seven thousand is still of the tribe of Israel, right? Even so then at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Now let's go to Daniel chapter 11 because he said he got 7,000 men that have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal, right? So meaning that he still got some, some folks that still perpetuate the truth even though, even though people have taken this book and mixed with a whole bunch of lies he still got he still got people that have the pure uncut true work of god right he still got them in the world so he, he so like don't worry all right i have i have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed to me to the image of Baal. even so then at this present time there is a remnant according to the election of grace so now let's let's look more into this not bound in the knee to the image of Baal. Daniel chapter 11, verses 31 through 35. We're going to look at the abomination of desolation because that's what this abomination of desolation or this antichrist, as a lot of people know him as, that's what he's going to try to do. He's going to try to get you to bow, right? But, but, he got some folks still that's that's not gonna have it. Okay, so verse 31, Daniel chapter 11, verse 31 is still talking again about this antichrist or the abomination of desolation, this last king of Rome, right? It says, An arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. And they shall take away the daily and shall take away the daily sacrificing, and they shall place place the abomination that make it desolate. So this abomination of desolation is gonna have armies in in you know to pretty much be his strength, right? And then they're gonna place the abomination of desolation. These armies are gonna place this abomination in in the holy land or in the temple of God, right? And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. So the ones that's not keeping the laws of God, this Antichrist is going to corrupt them by flattery, right? He said, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. So again, he's going to corrupt the people that's not keeping the laws of God or the laws of the covenant. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And the ones that's still closest to God is um is Israel. Like, hold on, let me go to Hosea real quick. I think it's Hosea. 
No, I think it might be Amos. Actually, Amos chapter 3. Yeah, Amos chapter 3. It says, Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. That's who we're talking to again. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore will I punish you for all your iniquities. So God said he only knew Israel. He only ever talked to Israel. He's the only person. He's the only nation he's dealt with on this world. So it says in verse 32 of Daniel 11, But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Most of these people are going to be of the children of Israel. Not just the children of Israel. It's not just just solely based upon them at, in this scripture because you're going to have a lot of people that learn from Israel too. And they're going to teach people. But it's mainly going to be Israel. The true Israelites. Right? Oh, dang. I don't forgot to go to Ezekiel 37. But... Uh, Okay, I'm going to read this and then I'm going to go back to Ezekiel 37. But it says, But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame and by captivity and by spoil many days. Right? But I'm going to go back to Ezekiel 37. I'm not even going to do it on on the, the screen i'm gonna just read through a few verses but so we can get the so we can get a better context because this was actually supposed to be read after deuteronomy 30 where he said you know after after y'all get scattered off into the land y'all gonna you know remember these things you know after the blessing and the cursing come upon you y'all gonna be y'all gonna remember these things among the lands that y'all got scattered to right so ezekiel 37 and it's talking about the resurrection, the spiritual death and resurrection of Israel. And it says, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of a valley which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. So now Ezekiel is seeing a valley full of dry bones. There's a lot of bones in this valley, and they've been dead for a long time. And the Lord said to Ezekiel, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. So like only God knows that these bones can live. Again, he said, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live. You shall know that I am the Lord. Now, skipping down to verse 9, it says, Then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, Prophesy, son of man, say unto the wind, Thus saith the Lord, God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, and exceed a great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are our, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. Right? But verse 14 it says, And I shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. See, that's gonna be the end of this the end of this of uh, Ezekiel 37 us being placed in our land like right now right now the people waking up to who they are again that's this that's the Lord placing his spirit in us but it's eventually going to end in him bringing us back into our land but back to dang where was I I was in Daniel chapter 11 right Daniel chapter 11 because now because now that you get Israel spiritually resurrected then 
they're going to pretty much get back on their job as priests of God. So now back in Daniel 11, it says, but the people that do know their God, talking talking about mainly Israel, but in, in the nations that got grafted to Israel. Let's say that it's Israel and the nations that got grafted in. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame and by captivity and by spoil many days. So this Antichrist is going to be killing the ones that do know their God and the ones that's teaching against him. Right? And it says, now when they shall fall, they will be hoping with a little help. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white even to the time of the end because it is yet for a time appointed now second king six is pretty much giving getting into that mentality of somebody having enough power to have an army against you right second king six because just like the abomination of desolation is going to have an army and try to make you bow down to his image. We could take this second king six as as a as a as an example. Second king six verses 14 through 17. This is Elisha and he got the king of Syria surrounding him with his army. So it says, therefore, he sent thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and passed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early he got and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? So the servant of Elisha goes outside and sees this whole army surrounding. So he's like, yo, what are we going to do? Verse 16, Elisha, and he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. So I just wanted to put that in there just to show you, like, how you got to act when in when in the last days you see the abomination of desolation and again this man has armies on his side right this is how you gotta act you gotta act like yo we got a bigger army than y'all got but luke 21 and verse 24 going back to the children of israel right luke 21 and verse 24 says and they shall fall by the edge of the sword still talking about still talking about being killed the israelites the, the the true priests of god and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations oh again we see that they're going to be israel is going to be led away into all nations right and in the same chat well in Matthew 24, which is pretty much dang near going am among this same conversation, but it says that um, that this word, that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into as as a witness unto all nations, right? But God's kingdom of priests is still going to be scattered into all nations, led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now we're going to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8 and verse 4. It says, Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Oh, so the ones that were scattered. Now this is talking about um, some, some, just a handful of disciples. But it's still... This still can apply to this nation of priests, though. He says, therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. And this is how 
the word of God is going to be scattered into all this this gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached into all our nations because the priests that were scattered are going to start preaching the word everywhere that they were scattered at. It says, therefore, that therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Now we're gonna end this off in Matthew 24 and verses 29 through 31. Matthew 24. And this is probably talking about immediately after the tribulation. Talking about um the Lord coming and gathering his saints. So 24 and 29. Yep. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man, and then shall all the tribes of the earth oh shall appear and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the pow- in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the sound of, with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall do what? Gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now, if we go back to um, go back to Deuteronomy 30, and we'll see it in real time. Because this is just it's, it's, it's going it's going just like we read it. It says, and which shall come to pass, and it shall come to pass when all these things shall come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee. And thou shalt call unto mind among all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee. So calling the Lord's law, statutes, commandments to mind after you've been scattered, right? And returning unto the Lord thy God. Verse 2 it says, And shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall Obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity, right? And have compassion upon thee and will return. So now we see the Lord returning, right? And shall then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, right? You see, he's returning. Uh Deuteronomy thirty and three, middle of three. And will return and gather thee from all the nations with the Lord thy God has scattered thee. So now you see Jesus, he's returning, right? And all the tribes of the earth shall mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man come in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the sound of a great trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. From one end of heaven to the other. So we see clearly like the coming of the Lord is pretty much predicated upon his people, his kingdom of priests, waking waking up to themselves again. Right? Like, it's not just it's not just it's not just the Lord coming back when the Lord's coming back. Nah, he's he's got prophecy, he's got appointed times for everything, and his appointed time to return is really when his people wake up to who they are. Remembering him and going back to his law, statutes, and commandments. But that's it on that. And I just want to say, I want to say peace to everybody. Thank y'all for tuning in, whether it's live or whether it's one of the recordings on Twitch or YouTube. And I pray that the eyes of your understanding were enlightened by today's lesson. And hey, peace to y'all. I hope you hope y'all come through again for the next stream. In Jesus' name. Peace.